Uh, please welcome our next speakers, Catherine Appleby and Michael Aguilar, both of Sandia National Laboratories for the next session on an integrated deep reinforcement learning agent for Sunfish and HPC workload manager, composable disaggregated resource scheduling. Uh, Catherine is a computer scientist in applied machine intelligence, focusing on applications for deep learning, primarily on computer vision and natural language process tasks. Michael is the other co-chair of the Open Fabrics uh, Management Framework Working Group. Uh, he's a senior computer scientist for HPC research and development and the lead HPC systems, systems engineer for Sandy Labs, Astra and Meyer Testbed HPC systems. Catherine, I think you were gonna share. There you are. Okay, I'm unmuted now. Okay, um, Michael, if you want to take us off. Okay, um, so uh, Catherine and I are gonna be talking about the um, uh, all, the client side of the um, Open Fabrics Management Framework Sunfish, and uh, we're going to be talking about um, how to be optimally um, connect r those resources as uh, clients to now as uh, to make um, software-defined um, compute nodes for um, for our uh, HPC systems and for cloud systems. Um, so, next slide. All right. So, we're going to talk about why uh, composable disaggregated infrastructure, uh, large HPC systems. Um, right now, what we're doing is we're designing those HPC systems uh, with a lot of resources uh, that are being put into uh, compute nodes, and then um, not every batch job or runs those compute nodes on those compute nodes runs those resources so we're stranding the resources and wasting energy and also we're wasting um material uh that we could be uh sharing across other machine compute nodes and uh so we're wasting basically money outlay money for the systems um also wasting power and cooling Resource limits are fixed for each compute node because we're making them, each compute node on current systems to be um, able to handle as many different batch jobs as possible. And with, when we do that, the uh, resource limits, we, we, what we do is we'll put as many resources into those compute nodes as we can. Um, what we're planning on, what, what we're doing with Sunfish is we're allowing those resources to be pulled into a, a, a remote area and then pulled into as each batch job needs it. Uh, so we're mitigating stranded resources. Uh, we're utilizing expensive resources, like especially with GPUs being hot and expensive, uh, and memory again, uh, and CPUs also. Where if we share those resources, then we can uh, uh, better match batch jobs. Um, next slide. So here's how the CDI works. This is what uh, Christian just showed. Uh, what we're doing is we're taking basic nodes, and in this case, we're augmenting the basic nodes with non-volatile memory over fabrics, and uh, we make the association just like uh, Christian just showed on the uh, demo, and then we can uh, um, share those, put those resources in a remote pool and then share them. Uh, if we need uh, more storage for us, in this case, for one use case would be for uh, an IO system. If we need more ser storage servers to mitigate load issues, we can dynamically pull them in. That solves a lot of issues that we have on HPC. Uh, next uh, slide. Uh, so here's what I'm talking about. If we were able to take racks and put resource pools on the top of the racks, then we can go in there and we can make associations to uh, from the basic nodes to the uh, memory that we need. We can leave it, and if we have a functioning node, we can actually leave that behind, allocate another node, and utilize the memory from the pool that we already were using with somebody else. Do that seamlessly, so we can. Uh, keep batch jobs running if there's a bad node or we could also uh, like i said we can we can 
share those uh, expensive resources um, across other nodes. Next slide. So on an HPC system, uh, what we're, we're proposing, we need to be able to keep track of a huge number of concurrent resources. We're gonna have a lot of racks on some of these systems. Uh, we have a lot of nodes and a lot of switches and a lot of resource pools. So we need to keep um, the uh, resources down to a uh, reasonable, uh, we have to keep control of those resources in a reasonable way. Uh, somebody kind of touched on it with the last question to Christian. Um, how do we keep those, the communications down to a reasonable quantity? And we also want to make sure that we make uh, timely changes to those HPC systems as the changes are requested. Uh, so we need to be able to handle that on an HPC system or a big cloud system. Next slide. So we are working on, we, me, Catherine and I have been working on this, on the composition side of the uh, Sunfish uh, management layer. So that'd be everything on the left side, CDI composition interface, and then the clients. Um, and then we were talking about the Redfish um, core, that was what, and, and the right side of it, that's what um, Christian just talked about. We're talking about the left side to control it. Um, so we have resource control operations, uh, we want to also keep track of uh, resources. So we, if we, do, if clients want to query, we don't have to go right to Redfish every single time, over to Swordfish every single time, and Redfish on the uh, Sunfish layer. So we can do that on the uh, composition interface. Um, also, we want to keep track of composition policies and authorization. So we do that uh, in our composability manager. Um, next slide. Um, so Catherine is going to be talking a little bit about how this is going to be deployed. What we have is a resource broker in the management layer, um, and it will be giving us active, pending, and free resources. Um, she, we also are going to be linking to container deployment like Kubernetes and workload managers like Flux. And then the batch jobs go to, and the interactive jobs go to the workload manager um, and the container deployment. Next slide. So there is another part of this uh, equation too, is we want to be able to manage resources as they're allocated. For instance, um, we want to be able to block out resource contenders. Again, we're going to be scaling this out to a lot of requesters over a large system. So we want to make sure when we allocate, we're attempting to allocate resources, we're blocking out contenders to those resources. Um, we also want to make sure that um, resources, when they're allocated, that there, we verify that that uh, proposed allocation can be made, and then we make sure it is made all the way across all the uh, um, all the uh, resources and um, also to the associations that are being made to the basic nodes. Um, if that doesn't happen, we're still working out what the best option to do this is. If we have a failure, do we roll back everything, or we partially roll it back, or re? Uh, try to re attempt reassignment to um, on another, another set of resources and nodes. Um, if it does, then we update everything with events into Sunfish and then also into our composability manager. Next slide. So each one of those components I just showed would be aggregated into one full verification operation. If everything is successful, then we're good to go. And if uh, we deallocate those resources, everything is successful, then we're good to go. If uh, something fails in between, then we need to um, decide how we're going to, we're still working on how we're going to handle that. Next slide. So again, um, we are trying to scale this. So we have a message queue and then it's RESTful. Uh, that goes through, we can also use Kafka or uh, RabbitMQ as a, to que help us scale it out on the interface between the co Composability Manager interface and Redfish Core, I mean, uh, Sunfish Core. Um, if, uh, and again, our, our uh, re re capabilities inside the Composability Manager with the resource graphs and stuff that we're proposing will allow us to uh, scale out too, because the requests from the clients don't go directly to 
sunfish, they'll go to the uh, um, the resource graphs in the composability manager. Next slide. And then, of course, we're showing how the, all that links together with the uh, right side. Um, so, uh, again, message queuing, we're doing um, events, data, and transactions through the message queue. Um, again, that could be RabbitMQ or Kafka. Uh, next slide. Okay, I'm going to turn this over to uh, Catherine. Thank you. Um, so I'll talk a bit more about the um, resource scheduling part. So it's been referenced as the intelligent resource scheduler or, or the uh, reinforcement learning agent. Um, so we have this idea of a machine learning plugin um, that interacts with several um, parts in the whole framework. Um, and what we really want to do is take um, information about the jobs that are coming in um, and all the resources that are available and be able to um, intelligently schedule into the future uh, the individual resource pools and uh, the jobs that run on them. So, um, so we'll have a four-dimensional software-defined node allocation. Um, so the uh, intelligent resource scheduler will interact with the um, kind of client-facing um, or user-facing uh, parts, like the Flux workload manager. Um, so within Flux, there's a Flux agent, an engine, and a client, which will do um, different parts. So we'll get information about the incoming jobs from Flux, tell Flux um, what needs to be scheduled when, um, and then this will, will also tell the um, uh, composition or custom resource broker uh, what uh, is a recommended schedule um, to attempt. So within the resource scheduler, um, we'll have a multi-agent approach, so multiple reinforcement learning agents. Um, the first part will be a hierarchical neural network. Uh, for that, we'll focus on the job scheduling. Um, so the level one will be uh, job assignments. Um, so for both ready and reserved jobs. Um, and then level two will be to backfill jobs since reinforcement learning won't do that by itself. Uh, this will also help um, having a specific reward function purely for the uh, job scheduling will help uh, reduce starved, re uh, starved jobs. Um, and then our second part will be the resource policy agent. And we'll probably have several agents within there um, for assigning uh, resources to pools um, and then uh, kind of further on resource assignments to jobs. Um, so why reinforcement learning? Um, there's uh, several, several things that I'll get into more, um, but main thing is the ability to control uh, rewards. Um, so from the um, kind of run schedule, we can take that uh, or record the queue time and job run time, um, and we can uh, penalize that to, re to reduce those. Um, and then we can also look at energy usage and everything. Um, so current workload managers like Flux and Slurm uh, use heuristic approaches to job scheduling and actually resource scheduling, though they don't explicitly uh, schedule resources all the time. Um, so heuristics are fair, but they are not always the most efficient. Um, and then optimiza optimization algorithms are the other option, but they must be highly tailored to specific machines. Um, so reinforcement learning, as mentioned, allows us to customize our reward functions. Um, this is also machine agnostic, so we can adapt to different amounts of resources and changing resources, as well as different traffic volumes. So we'll improve um, our scheduling algorithms over time. Uh, so as mentioned, it can be prone to job starvation, uh, and it may need lots of compute time, um, but these are things that can be addressed uh, in different ways. Okay, back to you. Um, so, um, hardware execution is, again, as 
we just, as Christian just showed, ex, uh, executed with hardware connected hardware agents. Um, and then the management is done by Sunfish Core. Um, in our case, Fl um, Slur, Flux, or um, Kubernetes allocates the nodes and, and requests resources. Uh, and then, next slide. And so flow is again left to right and back. So we would go um, make a request to the composability manager. The composability manager um, talks to Sunfish and says, hey, this is what I would like. And then the um, hardware agents make the uh, um, associations. Uh, the events come back to Sunfish and say, hey, I've been successful. And then that comes back to with the data of the success back to the composability manager. So it gets recorded inside the um, Sunfish uh, composability manager. And then the client, it gets the information gets piped back through to the clients. It could be, in our case, Flux or Kubernetes. And um, that's all done through events and data. Uh, next trend, next slide. Um, the composability manager always makes requests to the hardware resources from Sunfish. Transactions and data go from the composability manager to the uh, to Sunfish, and then the events bring goes back successes or failures, what's happened, and then we get updated uh, data as well. So, next slide. And uh, Sunfish, when it does the, as Christian just showed, it does the hardware agents to aggregate routes and endpoints to fulfill a request, in this case, for, for non-volatile memory over fabrics. The events are generated and propagated back through. And you'll see I've highlighted the uh, Sunfish services that, that get affected. Uh, you'll get inventory configuration, fabric configuration, and events and logs get updated. Um, next slide. think that that we're done That's is it. they may have a question <laughs> see so someone's asking how you if you can expand on how to scale out the composability layer for a large number of requests on a large system um, so we would do that with um, again the composability manager is a key part of that so we have um, if we have a lot of requests coming in um, that's going to go to uh, the uh, uh, resource scheduler, um, and we want to make sure that um, we use um, try to do as much in the composability layer as, as possible. That's where the graph databases come in because they're really a map of what's inside Sunfish real time. And then uh, uh, Catherine can kind of expand on the uh, on the uh, um, how those all resources get allocated and such so yeah um so expanding um kind of real time with resources they just be added into uh the available resources so the um next iteration uh they'd be included in within the scheduling uh benson you've raised your hand you have a question you like to unmute yourself? Will it cater to um, users with different levels of experience? As yes, that's the target. We're we're trying to make sure that um, well, again, we're we're interfacing in this case through uh, Flux and um, Kubernetes, and those are are uh, well known uh, user facing. Um, methods for people to schedule batch jobs and containers so there that helps make it user friendly and then uh, those are using um, easy communications between those um, systems and with plugins over to the uh, composability manager so it's, it's the whole idea is to make sure it's, it's simple for the users to to work with Thank you for the question, Benson. 
Are there any other questions? I don't see any other questions. Thank you, Catherine and Mike. Appreciate it. Thank you.